everybody, this is the Vita. I'm going to start this review with a little bit of a, a metaphor. Let's say that you're going to buy a house and a broker says, I have this legendary house that I think you're going to absolutely love. This is not exactly the type of house you usually you know, buy. You buy usually, you know, medium sized houses, but this is a big legendary house. So you, you know, you go there and you go into, you know, be shown the house. But then the guy insists to show you the garage. It's a standard boring garage for two cars and he's showing you everything in the garage. The doors, the place where, you know, the cars will, you know, be parked in and stuff like that. And you think to yourself, but what about the house up there? It seems like a nice house. And after a long time, you finally get to, you know, a tour of the actual house and you're walking around thinking, Oh my God, what a house this is. I love this house. And when you've been there for a little bit of a time, then the broker says to you, come on, come on, I'm gonna show you the rest of the garage. You're thinking, for fuck's sake. This is a bit of what I thought of when I watched this movie, because this movie is structured in the most damaging way possible. I really wanted to like this movie, but I couldn't. I don't know whether or not it was because I know what was going to happen or because the structure of the movie made what happened kind of redundant. Let's find out what this movie is about and why I didn't like it as much as I wanted to. This is Sophie's Choice. takes place a few years after World War II and Stingo, our narrator, is heading up to New York to finish his book that he is, you know, working on. And he's renting this house in Brooklyn. And uh, we, there is also two other tenants in that house. Uh, Nathan, played by Kevin Klein, and Sophie, played by Meryl Streep. She's a bit introvert and, you know, doesn't say much and stuff like that and seems to be haunted by her experiences, you know, as a Jewish uh, survivor of the Holocaust. He is this brash, outgoing and troublemaking dude who, you know, believes he's, you know, a big shot and more than he actually is. And he befriends them and uh, tries to find out more about them. And here's where the problem starts. Of this two and a half hour movie, we get to spend about one hour, ten minutes of the first half of the movie, give or take five minutes, of just Brooklyn. Him befriending Nathan and Sophie, them going out to picnics and stuff like that, and nothing happens. And I was thinking to myself, can we, you know, have her backstory? Because it seems to be more interesting than what's happening here, which is fucking nothing. And then when I was incredibly bored and I was very frustrated, we finally got to go to the Holocaust bit of the movie. And then a Oscar-worthy monolith of a movie just swept in and went in and said, I'm taking over, pal. And I loved it. This is one of the greatest depictions of the Holocaust I've ever seen. It's just giving me more ammunition in my opinion that it was a bad decision by Steven Spielberg to make Schindler's List black and white and with English speaking actors. This movie, even though it has sepia tones so that, you know, drain some of the colors away, we get to experience the Holocaust in all its awful horribleness. And it was haunting, it was authentic, because when the, you know, officers speaking German and they're speaking Polish, we feel like we are there and it crashes down on us and it is so horrible and it's so great. And then we have to go back to fucking Brooklyn. Jesus Christ. Ugh. So out of this almost two and a half hour movie, we have about half an hour or thereabout of a uh, fantastic masterclass filmmaking. The rest of it is like a Hallmark movie with some pretty damn good actors. I didn't know Kevin Klein was so good for dramatic roles and he does a pretty good job with his outgoing and brash uh, Nathan. But there is one problem with his performance. This movie was made approximately three or four years before A Fish Called Wanda and he has the same moustache as Otto and he has some of the same mannerisms as Otto and making the same weird noises that Otto made and I was like 
your auto. In a movie about the Holocaust. This is so very strange. It's like he would say in a second, Hello, Ken's pets. That was so very, very distracting. Meryl Streep is, of course, fantastic. But here's the thing. The sequence that everybody remembers that was this, you know, water cooler conversation after this movie was released, actually carrying all the way up until, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. I heard people still talking about, you know, Sophie's Choice and what a fantastic movie it was. And I knew this sequence was coming. I knew that before I saw this movie. If that hurt my experience, I don't know. But the thing is that I knew, you know, something happened during the Holocaust and and I also knew that that probably was going to be more interesting than the uh, things in Brooklyn. But I didn't know exactly how damaging that would be for the rest of the movie. Because when this sequence happens, which is one of the most horrible, one of the most dramatic, one of the most sad and horrible sequences in cinema history. Being portrayed also by one of the greatest actresses in cinema history. It should have hit me like a fucking sledgehammer, but it hit me more like a rubber hammer, more like ouch, because how this movie was structured. We have one hour and 10 minutes of useless stuff in Brooklyn that doesn't matter. Then we have 30 minutes of, you know, Sophie's experience in the Holocaust when she's trying to survive against all of the stuff like that. And then we go back to fucking Brooklyn. We only return you know, for the ending when we see the, you know, famous scene. And then it doesn't matter anymore because it should have impacted the rest of the movie, but it doesn't because it comes in the end. I'm probably one of very few who complains about this aspect of the movie, but it did. It hurted the thing for me. I wish this movie would have been two hours of Holocaust horribleness which could have been interspersed with things from Brooklyn because it would have mattered more because we would have understood it more. And also, I think we should have had more things with her backstory and her relationship with her father. It was far more interesting than anything else in this movie. Is Sophie's Choice a bad movie? No, no, it is not. Meryl Streep is so worthy of her Oscar in this movie and the themes of the movie and the ideas of the movie is fantastic but for some reason for me it didn't work because of how this movie was structured and because we you know spent all our time in that fucking garage instead of up in the mansion where we should have been maybe i'm just complaining but that is how i feel it is not an overrated movie it is a movie that should have been great but wasn't for a number of reasons and stingo the glue that is supposed to hold this movie together the narrator and basically our main character is so fucking boring he has the personality of wet bread and i fucking hated him and he was you know inserting himself all over the place if he could have been you know a much smaller part it probably could have been better but but maybe i'm complaining maybe i'm totally wrong about this but this was a movie i had so high hopes for but for some reason it didn't work was it hurt because I knew, you know, what is going to happen? I don't know. But I can't recommend this movie in good faith. But I will say this. Many people probably like this movie a lot more than I do. I just was so disappointed at how this movie was structured. Maybe it's just me. It feels wrong to give a movie like Sophie's Choice 38 points. But I have to be fair and I have to be consequent. This movie is fantastic in many aspects. But as a whole, I didn't like it. It was too long. It has severe pacing issues and even worse structure issues. But as I said, maybe I'm just complaining about things. I don't know. As a comparison, the Holocaust Survivor movie Survivor was actually better than this one. And it had similar themes, but it was made in a better fashion, in my opinion. But as I said, I just might be wrong about this. So we'll see you next time for Well So and So Reviewing. Well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.